What is Gold House? A gold open? Or is it now going to go by for the Eternals? Hashtag one open. We're going to talk about that. The question is, unlike previous movies that they have dove into, particularly ones like Parasite, Crazy Rich Asians, and recently Shang-Chi, I don't know if this organization is going to be enough to really bolster the box office of a precipitously declining Eternals, Kevin Feige's latest representation installment in the MCU. And I say representation by his own description, as we've had really no other description of this movie from his mouth to this point, as it continues to fall now at 56%. Let's talk about this. So following up the last video I put out that was getting a little bit long and I didn't want to get into this next phase of things in that previous video, but here we are on the evening of November 2nd. I'm, I'm now putting together the second part of this. Uh, did an interview late last night with Cameron Pasha. That will be the next video coming out. Also talking about Kevin Feige, Marvel, the direction it has been going. Uh, over the last six or seven years, really, since Kevin Feige has basically been given full control of Marvel Studios after the departure of people like Ike Perlmutter um, and, and what we've got out of that, some of the new characters. So stay tuned. We're going to do that with Cameron uh, coming up in the next couple of days. That'll probably be out Thursday morning, I would think, at this point. Uh, but here we are now sitting at 56% rotten. And it continues to fall. You know, in the last video uh, that I cut, I said that I really felt like we were going to continue to see a teeter-totter between 59 and 60% on the Rotten Tomatoes score. And again, not that I'm a particular fan of Rotten Tomatoes in the least. Uh, in fact, I found the critic scores to be most of a laughable joke over the years. What I do find particularly interesting, as many other YouTubers like myself have, have, have found is that this is a movie that was deliberately served up to them on a silver platter of social justice, inclusivity, representation, social justice, checkboxes. I mean, everything that these people, these professional critics, that are frankly, by and large, many of them detached from real America out there that just doesn't care about this stuff. Not that we don't care about people being who they are or having representation in movies, but... That this, this is not what we look for in a film. Most of us, are like myself, we don't care who is in the movie. We don't care, really, what the character is being represented by. We just care that the character's good and the movie's entertaining. I mean, that's really it. But again, like I said in the last video to this point, Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios, at least from the marketing standpoint, have really given us nothing to go on with the Eternals. And it's surprising to me that the information that we have gotten this far has not been enough to satisfy these critics whatsoever. And it looks like things are trending worse, including box office tracking. But what I want to go into is what we started with, because this is why you're here tonight, to learn about the Gold House. And I want to say up front, you know, this is a legitimate non-for-profit organization. Uh, you know, they are there, as you can see, Gold House forges inclusive unity representation uh, for Asians and in success of Asians and Pacific Islanders. Um, fine. Great. Wonderful. This is basically, a, 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 you know, a nonprofit that is operated and funded by, uh, according to their website, a lot of successful uh, executives in Silicon Valley and Hollywood that share the ethnicity uh, of, of Asian and Pacific Islanders uh, that fund this organization to promote, uh, it seems like largely artistic works of fellow Asian and Pacific Islanders who make films or write books. And basically what they do is they go out and they ensure that the launches of these products and titles that their advisory committee selects become successful, or at least to the best of their ability. So we're going to talk about this because there have been films that they have involved themselves in over the years. And for those of you who've heard me talk about before or other people talk about before, they always scratch their heads wondering if movie studios kind of pad uh, some of the box office opening weekend numbers with marketing budgets, which is honestly, it's not a bad investment at all, considering at least prior to the pandemic that many of these larger big blockbuster release titles like you'd get from Marvel or Star Wars or some Warner Brothers films, uni big Universal Pictures movies, where in some cases some of these studios were taking home 
80 to 90 percent in some limited cases uh, of, of the theatrical rentals, meaning if you bought a $10 movie ticket, the movie studio is walking home with 70, 80, 90 dollars in that opening weekend. Uh, not a bad haul if you wanted to throw out, in theory, $10 million to buy some of your own movie tickets out there if you're going to get 90% of it back because what it buys you is some amazing press like fastest movie to open at this number or highest number of one day sales for a preview at launch. Da -da 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 because that type of marketing is really invaluable to a distribution arm. And I'm not saying they have done that. I'm just saying if they did do it, it's 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 actually would be a It'd be an excellent business investment. So anyway, on to this. So let's talk about Gold House. Let's talk about who they are. And you may have heard from, uh, you know, some of this before on YouTube. Uh, I know my bud, uh, good buddy Culture Casino out there. We had a little brief conversation and chat today when he was doing his live stream. Um, you know, he knows about this. He's talked about this before. Uh, this was something I was not terribly familiar with. I knew these kind of organizations were out there. But I happened to catch a, an article on Deadline, which was also in Hollywood Reporter and Variety. We'll get to this in a minute, which called a little bit more to my attention. So I wanted to address this. And I think it's funny now that we're seeing some of the collapse in the ratings and reviews from the professional critics, quote unquote. Boy, I'm using air quotes a lot tonight. Huh? Uh, professional critics out there at Rotten Tomatoes, because I think this is very different from what we've seen before with movies like Parasite, Crazy Rich Asians, and Shang-Chi, which were very well-loved and well highly rated by these critics, and Eternals is not getting this. So what do they do? What? How do, how do they choose this? What do these guys do? This is the Golden Rider. This is the Gold Open, the hashtag Gold Open, which is their initiative in this case to do everything in their power to make sure that an opening weekend of, in this case, a movie, and in this case we're talking about Eternals or Shang-Chi um, or some of the other ones I mentioned like Parasite and Crazy Rich Agents, um, that they do everything in their power to make that opening weekend a big success or as much of a success as possible. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any hard numbers on what kind of impact they've had, but based on the size and their growth over the last years, we can determine that they probably have a relatively, uh, you know, decent impact. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that they're impacting the box office, you know, with 40 and 50 million dollars, uh, but they're 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 probably, you know, they're probably trying to go in that direction over time. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. But I, again, this is all for academic discussion, just so you guys know that this organization is out there. Um, Gold Open is a substantial promotional movement to ensure the opening weekend success of multicultural films. Achieving a gold open means the film debuts number one at the box office in its opening weekend in its category. The advisory council informs and influences which films receive a gold open. Once selected, the golden rider is an educational clause whose agreement secures a film's gold open. Now, of course, what is a gold rider? Well, we have that right here. Okay. <clears throat> And it talks about, we celebrate that our film has at least one authentically portrayed Asian lead and or an Asian director who has helmed a film that is critical to another multicultural community. Finally, and I want to skip down here. Finally, the project must be a feature-length film that is distributed theatrically for a minimum of one month. Well, it's a good thing. <laughs> it's a good thing Shang-Chi and the Eternals didn't get dumped on Disney+. Plus. Uh, okay, so moving on. Uh, let's talk about one of their, their, their projects from a few years ago, and they've been doing this a little while, but of course they've, they've gaining momentum. Crazy Rich Asians. Um, this was a very popular film. This was a critically well-reviewed film. This was an audience or a film that the audiences across the board really seem to like. I have not seen it. I, this is kind of one of those movies that's been on my list for a while that I'll, I'll eventually get around to it. Um, because everybody that I knew personally that saw it said they really liked it. So I'm like, yeah, I'll check it out. I'm not a rom-com kind of guy. Uh, most guys probably aren't. Uh, and most of the people that I heard from on this were women, which is rom-coms tend to be more of, of you know what they call chick flicks. Um, but I'm not opposed to checking it out. It actually looked like it was a pretty well done film. But I want to read this to you so you can kind of get an idea. So you can see Crazy Rich Asians, uh, and it talks about this. First, Asian, all Asian-American cast from a major studio in 25 years. Uh, Warner Brothers, uh, uh, John Chu. Da -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba so I want to get down to this. Um, 
you know, they were founders of the several history's most notable tech platforms that were involved in trying to push this. This was especially big out on the West Coast. Think Los Angeles, think San Francisco, think Seattle, uh, Sacramento. Think, I mean, think a lot of those West Coast areas, East Coast areas as well. But remember, their big donor base is Hollywood and Silicon Valley. So this is where they're really going after. And Hollywood Studios. Um that, of course, you know, somebody like Warner Brothers, why wouldn't they want to back this organization, financially speaking, if this organization is going to turn around and then push uh, their members into theaters? And and we'll get to this in a minute. One of the operations being just to straight buy out theaters, basically buy empty seats, buy out entire theaters. Whether the people show up or not, not important. Just buy it out because you want to get the box office to make PR. You want to get box office returns, and this is the ultimate goal. This is really what they're trying to do is to get the box office to be a surprise for some of these movies to where they get more reporting in magazines like Variety, Deadline, Hollywood Reporter, and then out across the country pushed out through places like the Associated Press and so on and so forth. Oh, wow, look, this is amazing. In this case, Crazy Rich Asians had an amazing opening weekend, blew away expectations. Nobody saw this coming. This is a movie that probably people need to check out. That's the kind of marketing buzz that's so hard to buy, and this is what they this is what they want to do. So you want to look down here, gold open, hashtag gold open. History delivered from Singapore to Australia to Japan to Germany to Hong Kong to the UK and to the United States. We bought theaters to show the world that representation means business. Well, again, like I said before, I'm all for representation. I don't really care if the movie's good, if the characters are good. I don't care who you put in the cast, short of it radically altering an existing character or an existing canon or something like that just for the sake of representation. But most people just want to see a good movie, like me. I, I, I don't care. Believe me, I've got, I've got plenty of Japanese films. I've got South Korean films. I've got Chinese films. And I can't stand English dubs. I'm a guy that watches stuff with subtitles. So look, just give me a good movie. And I think that's what most audiences want. But we bought theaters to show the world that we mean business or that representation means business. And I know you can't see this, but this is a massive list of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of donors and people that were involved in this organization to buy out theaters and to buy unused, to buy as many tickets as possible, load theaters up. Or, or at least buy the tickets out, even if people weren't going. Um, give you an idea of crazy rich agents. Here is Brian Yang, who is a Hollywood filmmaker, to my understanding. Um, now that now that is how you buy out a screening. Gold open, crazy rich movie, and you can see here he tweets a picture. This is from a few years ago, obviously when when Crazy Rich Asians came out, um, of him buying out an entire theater, uh, and this is just. This is one. This is one guy. One guy. Probably dropping, and they talk about this, dropping anywhere from two to $4,000 to buy out these theaters to do this. And, and they give the tickets away if they can from an organizational standpoint. But, as, of course, you also have individual members that go in and do this. So, uh, But here was one of the latest ones. Gold House. And this is from Variety. So this is not fly-by-night newspaper this is one of the one of the three pieces of the holy trinity of hollywood publications variety deadline and hollywood reporter thr gold house announces shang chi in the legend of the ten rings gold open film news in brief and this goes into again talking about the uh the 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 partnership they have now created as a network of non-for-profits and we can see this Asian and Pacific Islander nonprofit collective Gold House announced the launch of a Gold Open for Marvel Studios' Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings in partnership with GoFundMe. Now, let me stop right here. When one of your founding members are people like one of the co-founders of Twitch, and we're talking about people at that level of, of money, okay, um, they're not donating through GoFundMe, okay? People that have tons of money do not donate large sums to in, to nonprofits or NPOs through GoFundMe. They're writing private anonymous donation checks that you you know never disclosed in public. So when you look at the GoFundMe things and it's like, oh well, they only raised five thousand or they raised a hundred thousand. One of their GoFundMe's raised almost half a million. Um, the real big money is coming in the back door that you never see. And when you want to go out and 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 do a movie like Shang Chi 
or the Eternals, because of Chloe Zhao in this case, um, you're not going to make those donations public. That's a conversation you have privately with somebody like Kevin Feige, speculating, speculating. Uh, but I would, if I was running that NPO, you're damn right I would. Uh, hey, look, we really want to back your movie. We want to make sure this is a big success. We want to push a lot of people in this and help you set some records on opening weekend. Maybe a little donation to the uh, nonprofit would would you know help us to that extent. <clears throat> so the larger the picture, the larger the ask, right? This is just how business works. This is this is, and I'm not saying that this did happen, but I'm saying. It's 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 not a terribly long stretch of the imagination to assume that it did. And I'll show you in a second why. <laughs> Gold House Gold Open Premieres launched in partnership with CAPE, the Coalition of Asian Pacifics in Entertainment, or an initiative that aims to drive box office success for films led by Asians and Pacific Islanders. Parasite and Crazy Rich Asians are two films that have received gold opens in the past. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, which premieres September 3rd, will be the, thir the first theater-exclusive gold open since the start of the pandemic. So this is key. They have been obviously out of commission for a while because we have not had big movies. Um, so this is the first big push they had with Shang-Chi. Now, uh, I want to go down here. And this is what I'm talking about. The initiative also works with the film's cast, including Simu Liu, Tony Lung, Aquafina, Michelle Yao, Fala Chen, so on and so forth. Okay, They worked with everybody in the cast. They worked with the director. By extension, you can pretty much presume that they also had some backing from Marvel Studios because these things do not happen in a vacuum. Okay, um, And now they have moved on to other movies like The Eternals. This is their next project for November 5th. OK, um, they want to make sure that this movie has a successful a weekend opening weekend as possible. What did I talk about in a video last night? It was that with seemingly no buzz and no interest and very little fanfare in terms of Google trends and things like this, the opening day of ticket sales for Eternals magically was enormous. Two point five million in pre-sales according to figures reported on, again, the holy trinity of Hollywood reporting websites, that $2.5 million of tickets were sold on opening advanced ticket sale day for Eternals. That was substantially higher even than Shang-Chi, higher than Black Widow, uh, higher than Venom, so on and so forth. $2.5 million, that's a lot to rack up on the first day. And I mean, we're not talking about an end game or a Star Wars, you know, kind of movie here. We're talking about a movie that basically nobody seems to have much interest in and now the critics are, are just kind of dunking on. Where did that record number come from? Well, I think we can make a reasonable assumption that at least some part, maybe a significant part, came from this push. Is because why? Again, it creates the story, right? What would Marvel love to have? is a story that says the Eternals has just jacked the highest number or the highest amount of ticket sales on day one of advanced ticket sales of any movie since the pandemic. That's a great story to lead with. Doesn't it get your attention? Doesn't it get your interest? This is the kind of marketing that's so hard to buy inorganically. So you want to have a story like this where you have ticket sales reach these numbers to where you can then push this out and drive more interest in a film. This is just marketing 101. So again, I, I could be wrong. I'm not saying I have any evidence that that's the case, but well, here it is right here. They're doing this. We just don't know to what extent it affected it, but it's worth noting. That's all I'll say. <clears throat> Let's go to this. This is the new thing. This is one open. Gold open is basically no more when it comes to the Eternals. It is now hashtag one open. Why? The Eternals, apart from having Chloe Zhao, a talented director and filmmaker, directing the film, obviously of Asian and Pacific Island descent, um, who Academy Award winner, you know, a good storyteller from what we know. Critics don't seem to like what she did with a Marvel movie, but that's that's the other video that we did. Check that one out. Um, but the cast is also very diverse and representative, and we have heard Feige for months, Marvel Studios, for months, talk about representation, diversity, inclusion. This is all we have heard about Eternals for months. And this was my largest complaint. Well, 
Here's some other nonprofits out there that have joined in, and this is just really a small list. They have a network of hundreds of local organizations that are tied in, local meaning, you know, all around the country. So, you know, this is their new thing because the cast includes, you know, not just Pacific Islanders or Asians. You have African Americans. You have somebody. You have the one of the cast members is deaf, or one of the characters is deaf. Uh, you know, so you have this this mixed bag that they they're trying to go out there with representation, which again, fine, it's great. I just is it a good movie though? And it it's, doesn't seem like it's going there. Um, wish they would have focused on story before just making diversity and representation the first thing. But this is where we are. Um, so they have a lot of other organizations involved in this this time, which is why they have changed instead of Gold Open, which is specific just to the Asian and Pacific Islander community. They have now changed this to hashtag One Open. So look, if you're out there and you want to support this organization, that's fine and dandy. I'm not here to denigrate the organization at all, and I don't want anybody to misunderstand. Please don't leave comments below that, oh, you know, you're not, no, they're not doing anything illegal. They're not doing anything wrong. They're out there supporting their community, and I'm totally fine with that. I am bringing this to your attention so that you understand when we look at movies sometimes, like Shang-Chi was a great example, when the box office tracking when the box office tracking is coming out and they're talking about a 30 to 50 million and they bump it, oh, it might be 50 to 60 million. And then four days later, we get this $74 million three day, $90 million four day opening weekend. And it was like, whoa, how is the tracking this for far off? Well, when you have certain organizations out there that will, you know, pump up uh, certain communities, I guess, to go out and buy tickets and go see this. This is this is this is where we are. <clears throat> so again, you know, I had a number of friends talk about well, they went to theaters at Shang Chi, and it was like, well, the theater said it was mostly sold out. They went in there, and they're probably, you know, it wasn't even half full. Maybe you were in a gold open theater that got bought out. I, I had a number of friends tell me this, you know, in different cities around the country. Um, and of course, there were some places that were legitimately packed. I don't doubt that. I'm not saying that, you know, Shang-Chi's box office is fictitious. Don't get me wrong. Um, but obviously, you know, this was this was a target of this organization as it is now. Like I said, here's this is crazy rich agents from a few years ago. You have to imagine that this is this is only increased in scale and scope in the last two or three years. Their organization has certainly gotten certainly gotten bigger. So here we are, Gold House teams with NALIP, respectability, color of change for inaugural hashtag one open to support the box office campaign of the Eternals. This is from yesterday. Here you are on Deadline, and you will find this same story on Variety and The Hollywood Reporter and the Associated Press and other places like that. It's going everywhere. Um, so this is an organization that has clout. Matter of fact, they were guests uh, back in 2019 on one of the uh, one of the closing bells for the New York Stock Exchange, which is pretty high honor for a nonprofit organization like that. Um, so they're not they're not exactly small potatoes here, folks. Um, Gold House is expanding its efforts to support and amplify films led by diverse talent with this hashtag one open campaign for Marvel's Eternals. A nonprofit along with CAPE will team up with multicultural orgs, NALIP, Respectability, Color of Change, to provide support for the Glowy Zhao directed Marvel flick, which touts a lead cast of diverse actors. Um, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go through the, the description of it, but obviously, One Open is a spinoff of Gold House's original Gold Open, seeks to celebrate some of the most authentically diverse characters in the MCU. The first One Open kicks off on Friday, November 5th. The Eternal premiere date, they're launching a fundraiser to provide open caption screenings for the deaf and hard of hearing community. That's great. I love it. That's that's awesome. Do that. Um, so th th this goes on and on and on and on and on, you know, talking about the network they have built. So this is the point to all this. Will this matter? Will this matter for the Eternals? I don't know. I don't know. I think they certainly will have an impact opening weekend. That is their mission statement. That's what they're going to be focusing on because they want as successful an opening weekend as possible in order to drive the news media cycles to say, oh my gosh, look at how well this movie did. People love this thing. You need to go out and see it right now. That's how it works. It's that old fear of missing out. And that's what this organization does is drive that mindset. They drive that 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 kind of basic human instinct to like, oh man, everybody really loves this. We got to get out there and see it. And look, 
Crazy Rich Asians, Parasite. Uh, you know, you're talking about these, these movies that they've worked on before. Um, they had the benefit of also being really, really well respected movies by audiences. They had the benefit of being really well made movies uh, by directors and producers. Really good movies uh, from from everything that I have seen about them. I have not seen again. I have not seen either one of them, but I have really not heard anybody say that these movies were really just awful and you know can't explain how they did 180 million dollars at the box office for Crazy Rich Asians. Everybody loved them. That's great. I don't know if that's going to happen here with the Eternals. 56% right now. And these critics continue to beat the snot out of this movie. Uh, it is it is really getting, I'm just refreshing to make sure it's still at 56. I know this video is getting a little long-winded, even for me. <laughs> so, uh, but here we are. But again, like I said in the last video, um, it's an ambitious, sprawling story that feels bogged down by its own superhero antics. I mean, this is not... Again, these are the people that you would expect to respond positively, overwhelmingly positively to diversity and representation in a cast and have nothing else, have no story behind it. But all of a sudden now, this 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 is changing. And that's going to lead me into the next video because that's what Cameron Pasha and I are going to discuss is what the hell is going on all of a sudden that now Kevin Feige movies are not safe. When Kevin Feige has staked almost his entire uh, reputation of Phase 4 at this point on this diversity and representation kick. We saw it with, uh, you know, starting this year with Falcon and Winter Soldier, uh, with, with injecting a lot of politics into those two characters, which were beloved by fans. I was a huge Falcon fan, Anthony Mackie fan, from New Orleans. Why wouldn't I be, right? I mean... Uh, and, and and they took that and injected a lot of politics in it and turned it into something that it never should have been. And then we got Loki, which was a snooze fest, but we got girl Loki and it focused more on girl Loki. And now that's where we, so, and then we get these movies, you know, and it's, again, it's all about diversity and inclusion and sexual orientation and all these things that frankly do not matter, that audiences do not care about. We just want good stories. I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be enough to save this movie. It might have a great opening weekend. It might. It might actually hit 90 or $100 million as Box Office Pro is, is projecting it to do, which is still down 25% from initial projections. I think it's going to continue on a downward trend between now and the end of the week as more of these reviews come out. Um, but even if it does hit that mark, folks, I think the drop-off on this one is going to be something spectacular. I don't think we're looking at 60s, you know, in the 60% range. I think we're looking 70-plus uh, between the first and second weekends. And uh, this is a movie with a $200 million budget, $100 million easily in marketing. Uh, it's limited to a 45-day window. It's not getting the same kind of deals that Venom is getting at the box office, which had no strings attached. It is not going onto a streaming service after 45 or 60 days. Uh, you know, or, or Venom is not, uh, but this movie is. Um, so, I don't know. We're going to find out. Stay tuned. Next video with Cameron Pasha coming up. Please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Share this video out. Leave a comment before you head out tonight. And of course, take care.